sure man was born to meditate on things, and to contemplate the eternal springs of God in nature, glory, bliss, and pleasure, that life and love might be his heavenly treasure, and therefore speechless made at first, that he might in himself profoundly busy be, and not bent out, before he hath taught and in those antidotes that guard his soul from sin. Wise nature made him deaf, too, that he might not be disturbed, while he doth take delight in inward things, nor be depraved with tongues, nor injured by the errors and the wrongs that mortal words convey. For sin and death are most infused by accursed breath, that flowing from corrupted entrails, bear those hidden plagues which souls may justly fear. This, my dear friends, this was my blessed case, for nothing spoke to me but the fair face of heaven and earth, before myself could speak, I then my bliss did, when my silence, break. My non-intelligence of human words ten thousand pleasures unto me affords, for while I knew not what they to me said, before their souls were into mine conveyed, before their living vehicle of wind could breathe into me their infected mind, before my thoughts were leavened with theirs, before there any mixture was, the holy door, or gate of souls was close, and mine being one within itself to me alone was known. Then did I dwell within a world of light, distinct and separate from all men's sight, where I did feel strange thoughts, and such things see that were, or seemed, only revealed to me, there I saw all the world enjoyed by one, there I was in the world myself alone, no business serious seemed but one, no work but one was found, and that did in me lurk. Do ye ask me what? It was with clearer eyes to see all creatures full of deities, especially one's self, and to admire the satisfaction of all true desire, t'was to be pleased with all that God hath done, t'was to enjoy even all beneath the sun, t'was with a steady and immediate sense to feel and measure all the excellence of things, t'was to inherit endless treasure, and to be filled with everlasting pleasure, to reign in silence, and to sing alone, to see, love, covet, have, enjoy and praise, in one, to prize and to be ravished, to be true, sincere and single in a blessed view of all his gifts. Thus was I pent within a fort, impregnable to any sin, until the avenues being opened light whole legions entered, and the forts betrayed, before which time a pulpit in my mind, a temple and a teacher I did find, with a large text to comment on. No ear but eyes themselves were all the hearers there, and every stone, and every star a tongue, and every gale of wind a curious song. The heavens were an oracle, and spake divinity, the earth did undertake the office of a priest, and I being dumb, nothing besides was dumb, all things did come with voices and instructions, but when I had gained a tongue, their power began to die. Mine ears let other noises in, not theirs, a noise disturbing all my songs and prayers. My foes pulled down the temple to the ground, they my adoring soul did deeply wound and casting that into a swoon, destroyed the oracle, and all other enjoyed and having once inspired me with a sense of foreign vanities, they march out and send troops that cover and despoil my coasts, being the invisible, most hurtful hosts. Yet the first words mine infancy did hear, the things which in my dumbness did appear preventing all the rest, got such a root within my heart, and stick so close unto tea, it may be trampled on, but still will grow in nutriment to soil itself willow. The first impressions are immortal all, and let mine enemies hoop, cry, roar, or call. Yet these will whisper if I will but hear, and penetrate the heart, if not the ear, 